He was much too egotistical and unobservant to give me any clear idea of the kind of place, kind of country, there is on the other side of things. Wherever he was, he seems to have fallen in with a set of kindred spirits, ghosts of weak cockney young men who were on a footing of Christian names, and among these was certainly a lot of talk about going haunting and things like that. Yes, going haunting. They seemed to think haunting a tremendous adventure, and most of them funked it all the time. And so primed, you know, he had come. But really? These are the impressions he gave me, anyhow. I may, of course, have been in a rather uncritical state, but that was the sort of background he gave to himself. He kept flitting up and down, and with his thin voice going talking, and talking about his wretched self, and never a word of clear, firm statement from first to last. He was thinner and sillier and more pointless than if he'd been alive. Only then, you know, he would not have been in my bedroom here. If he had been alive, I should have kicked him out. And there's just as much chance of their having ghosts as the rest of us. What gave a sort of point to him, you know? was the fact that he did seem within limits to have found himself out. The mess he had made of haunting had depressed him terribly. He had been told it would be a lark. He had come expecting it to be a lark, and here it was. Nothing but another failure added to his record. He proclaimed himself an utter out-and-out -out failure. He said, I can't quite believe it that he had never tried to do anything all his life that he hadn't made a perfect mess of. And through all the wastes of eternity, he never would. If he had had sympathy, perhaps. He paused at that and stood regarding me. He remarked that, strange as it might seem to me, nobody, not anyone ever, had given the amount of sympathy I was doing now. I could see what he wanted straight away and I determined to head him off at once. I may be a brute, you know, but being the only friend, the recipient of confidences of one of these egotistical weaklings, ghost or body, is beyond my physical endurance. I got up briskly. Don't you brood on these things too much, I said. The thing you've got to do is to get out of this and get out of this sharp. You pull yourself together and try. I can't, he said. You try, I said, and try he did. Try? How? Passes. A complicated series of gestures and passes with the hands. That's how he had come in. And that's how he had to get out again. Lord, what a business I had. But how could any series of passes? You want everything clear. I don't know how. All I know is that you do. And that he did. Anyhow, at least, after a fearful time, you know, he had got his passes right and suddenly disappeared. Did you observe the passes? Yes, it was tremendously queer. There we were, I in this thin, vague ghost, in that silent room, in this silent, empty inn, in this silent little Friday night town. Not a sound except our voices and a faint panting he made when he swung. There was the bedroom candle and one candle on the dressing table alight. That was all. Sometimes one or other would flare up in a tall, lean, astonished flame for space. And queer things happened. I can't, he said, and I shall never. And suddenly he sat down on a little chair at the foot of the bed, began to sob, and sob. Lord, what a harrowing, whimpering thing he seemed. You pull yourself together, I said, and try to pat him on the back. <laughs> and my confounded hand went through him. By that time, you know, I wasn't nearly so massive as I had been on the landing. I got the queerness of it full. I remember snatching back my hand out of him, as if it were a little thrill, and walking over to the dressing table. You pull yourself together, I said to him, and try. And in order to encourage and help, I began to try as well. What? The passes? Yes, the passes. This is interesting. You mean to say this ghost of yours gave away? Did his level best to give away the whole confounded barrier. Yes. He didn't. He couldn't, or you'd have gone there too. That's precisely it. That is precisely it. At last he did it. I had to keep him up to it hard, but he did it at last, rather suddenly. He despaired. We had a scene, and then he got up abruptly and asked me to go through the whole performance, slowly, so that he might see. I believe, he said, 
If I could see, I should spot what was wrong at once. And he did. I know, he said. What do you know, said I. I know, he repeated. Then he said peevishly, I can't do it if you look at me. I really can't. It's been that partly all along. I'm such a nervous fellow that you put me out. Well, we had a bit of an argument. Naturally, I wanted to see, but he was as obstinate as a mule, and suddenly I'd come over as tired as a dog.